Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Bobby B from Rayton Productions. And today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to take a performance bass track that was recorded as a DI or a direct injection. Um, basically, that's just the bass plugged directly into your recording interface and turn that into a bunch of MIDI notes so you can run it through a synthesizer or a bass instrument. And you could do this using Cubase without knowing any of the MIDI notes or any of the notes that the bassist played. And I'm going to show you a trick. So what I have for you here is a bass DI. I'll play it for you. So this is a, a metal band. So we have like a, what would be a breakdown here. So I have no idea what tuning it is, but it sounds very low. So we can find out what notes these are by, if we double click the audio track, it'll bring up this sample editor window. And we go to over here to the very audio tab, and then we click pitch and warp. What this is doing is this is detecting the pitch of those bass notes. But if you've done this before, you'll realize pretty quickly that it does a really bad job of detecting what the notes are when they're really low, like on a bass instrument. And that's just a mathematical problem. So what ends up happening is we'll detect these higher notes here. So we know that's an A. But then when we go to these chuggy parts, we have no idea what the note is. So um, to get around that, what we're going to do is process the track before we let Cubase um, analyze the notes. So we're going to raise the DI track up an octave. So you can do that by clicking on the, the DI track, the bass track, going to audio process, and then pitch shift. Now, uh, make sure you're in the transpose tab, and it'll probably be on the C, C note. Um, what we're going to do is to transpose it up an octave, we're going we're gonna to say uh, transpose 12. 12 is 12 semitones, which is one octave. So that's going to make it sound almost like a guitar at that point. The other thing you want to make sure that you do is check the time correction, because otherwise, when we raise the pitch, it'll make the, the bass performance shorter. Uh, and time correction makes sure that it's the same length, which is going to be important for you when you're trying to extract out the MIDI notes later. And the MPEX-4 preset, I found that the MPEX poly musical algorithm has the, works the best for this type of note detection, so make sure you choose that. Otherwise, some of them can get really heavy in the artifacts, and the algorithm won't be able to, to detect the MIDI notes. So once you have that, click Apply. You'll get an, a message saying that our very audio data, which is the data, the notes that were detected earlier, are, are going to be um, incorrect after we uh, run this processing, which of course is going to be the case because we're raising it up an octave, so we want to proceed anyways. So now it's processing. This takes a little while. And by a little while, I mean like a long while. I feel like I could export the song faster. I actually I know we could export the song faster than it takes to process this pitch shift. This is taking so long. All right, we are almost done. Okay, so we have now the bass playing an octave higher. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So you can hear it sounds like a bass guitar at this point. And it still has those artifacts, but that's okay because we're not we're not using this track in the mix. We're just using this to generate the MIDI notes. So now, if we double click this, we go to our very audio tab and choose pitch and warp. It's almost like magic. All the notes are there now. So now the algorithm is able to detect the pitch, and we're able to generate all of the MIDI note information with a bass guitar. Pretty awesome. So what I like to do just before I export it is I'll quantize the pitch and straighten the pitch. This just gives me very tight um, notes from the MIDI data. 
Now you go to the Extract MIDI button, push that, and you can either do Fixed Velocity or Dynamic Velocity. If you want to maintain the, the performance of the bassist, I would suggest doing the Dynamic Velocity. That'll put the MIDI notes with the detected MIDI velocity. So how hard the bassist um, strummed the, the string will be reflected in the MIDI data. For this type of music, fixed velocity is perfect for me. Um, and I'm just having everything be 100. So that's the volume, essentially, of the MIDI notes. And we're just going to put it to a new MIDI track. Click OK. If we close out of our very audio editor, we can see that right here, right below it, is all the MIDI data for the bass. So hopefully this has helped somebody. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment below and tell me how I did. I need feedback to know if I'm answering the right questions and if I'm making content that's actually helpful for people. So don't be a stranger. Leave me a comment. And if you happen to be looking for a mixing engineer or producer or a mastering engineer, my contact information is below. I'd love to collaborate and hear about your music. Uh, until next time, I'll see you then. With the best to beat and defeat the villain, my confidence is straight to the ceiling. So you can say that you said he couldn't take the cool. You're close, but it's